So welcome everyone to the AWM We Speak uh, Women in Mathematics series. We are delighted today to have Dr. Eugenia Cheng as our special guest. Eugenia Cheng is a mathematician and concert pianist. She's a scientist in residence at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago and won tenure at the University of Sheffield, UK. She previously taught at the universities of Cambridge, Chicago, and Nice, and holds a PhD in pure mathematics from the University of Cambridge. Alongside her research in category theory, category theory and undergraduate teaching, her aim is to rid the world of math phobia. Eugenia was an early pioneer of math on YouTube, and her videos have been viewed over 15 million times to date. She also has assisted in mathematics in elementary, middle, and high schools for 20 years. Her first popular math book, How to Bake Pie, was featured on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert, and Beyond Infinity was shortlisted for the Royal Society Science Book Prize in 2017. She also writes the Everyday Math column for the Wall Street Journal and has completed mathematical art commissions at Hotel EMC2, or maybe that's EMC squared, um, 6018 North, Lubnick's Center, and the Cultural Center, Chicago. She's the founder of Leaderstube, an intimate oasis for art song based in, in Chicago. She also has written The Art of Logic and an Illogical World, X plus Y, a mathematician's manifesto for rethinking gender. And her first children's book, Molly and the Mathematical Mystery, was released in the US in March 2020, 2021. Dr. Chang will be joined by Sarah Ponder. Sarah Ponder is a mezzo soprano and a soloist, ensemble singer, and outreach performer with the organizations such as Lyric Opera and the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. She's on the faculty at Loyola University and the University of Chicago at uh, University of Illinois at Chicago. So without any further ado, Dr. Eugenia Chang and Sarah Ponder.
Thank you very much, and thank you all for joining us today. First of all, I'd like to thank the organizers at the AWM for inviting us to give this presentation. I'd like to thank the amazing mezzo Sarah Ponder for joining me in performing these songs. And I'd also like to thank Piano Forte Chicago from where we are streaming this and the engineer Jeremy Whetstone who is dealing with all the technical aspects and making us sound great, I think, I hope. The music that you just heard was the first song from Schumann's song cycle, Frauenliebe und Leben, except it wasn't in German. It was with different English words that I have written. And this is what I would like to talk about today. Schumann's original, so, original song cycle is called Frauenliebe und Leben, which means something like woman's life and love. Except, of course, it's written by a man. And the poetry is also by a man. Adelbert von Camisso, he wrote the poetry in 1838, and Schubert wrote these songs in 1840. And the woman's life and love that they're talking about is a kind of typical middle-class woman of the era. So the entire life of hers is that she falls in love with a man, gets married, has a baby, and then the man dies, and her life is basically over, because what's the point anymore at that point? The music is so beautiful, but... Unfortunately, that poetry no longer resonates so much with many of us contemporary strong women. But the music is so beautiful that we often want to perform it anyway. And it seemed that there were two options, either just give up singing these wonderful songs or somehow come up with ex some excuse for singing it anyway, like, oh, it was just in the context of the time or we're just acting. But I've decided that there is a third way. And during lockdown, it occurred to me to write new words, new English words that are, I think, more relevant to contemporary strong women. Because it turns out that although we may still feel the social pressures to do those things, get married and have children, that doesn't need to be the entire definition of our lives anymore. And so I decided to rewrite them to be more relevant in particular to my life and to many other women, because not everybody is interested in men or marriage or indeed having children. And some women like me are tragically unable to have children, in fact. And so I decided to write about my career instead. My career has been quite unusual, even aside from the fact that I am a woman mathematician, which is unusual in its own right. I did the usual things, like many women, I tried to fit in as a mathematician in the traditional mold of male mathematicians. So I did my PhD, I did postdocs around the world, I got the holy grail of tenure, and then I realized that I wasn't happy doing that. I didn't feel that it was making good use of all of my abilities, but more to the point, I didn't feel that I was accepted, and I had a bad time, I felt that I wasn't appreciated for all the things that I did. So I decided to turn my life around and I took the unusual step of quitting my tenured job and building myself a new portfolio career, as they say, where I do a whole range of things, including I teach category theory, very abstract mathematics, to art students at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. I write books for general audiences and for children. I go around the world, I used to before COVID, I hope to again. I go around the world doing public speaking and visiting campuses and talking to students and doing workshops with teachers and with children. I write a column in the Wall Street, Wall Street Journal. I do art, I play music, I run a not-for-profit to, to bring classical music to wider audiences as well. It might seem that if I write words about this, it will be very specific and even less applicable. And the thing is that it's not specifically about this story. It became rather more abstract, somewhat like the mathematics that I do, because I set myself various constraints. First of all, I didn't want to change a single note of the music because the music is beautiful. That means that I needed to write words that would fit to the existing music. And this is the other way around from how classical songs are usually written. Usually people take poetry and then make music to go with it. But because the music has rhythm built into it, that means that I had to pick words that would fit 
into the existing rhythm, but also importantly, that would fit the emotional arc, because Schumann's music has very clear emotions written into it. And so I wanted to mirror those emotions. And so the arc of being extremely excited to be in love with a man and then incredibly excited to get, to, to, to get married, I needed to find things that I was excited about but not, not necessarily say them specifically because it was very difficult to fit specific words in. For example, the next song begins like this. It goes, do, 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 do. And the original words are, er der herrlichste von allen. Er der herrlichste von allen, which means he, the most glorious man of all. So if you could pick words that fit that, it could be like, there's some very tasty ice cream. Okay, so that wouldn't exactly be very profound. So you could pick words that have the same number of syllables. You could say something like, I'm a professor of pure math, but the rhythm is all wrong. And so it doesn't sound right. It's unpleasant to sing, and then you can't understand it. So what I came up with instead is, there's the life I've always dreamed of. And so the whole set, I wanted to find words that would be meaningful, would also fit the music, would also be somewhat pleasant to sing, which means you have to play, pay attention to what vowels are on which notes. And also, just because that wasn't enough constraints, I decided I, I wanted to keep the rhyme scheme as well. So it's, it felt like quite a mathematical process, trying to solve this problem, fitting all these pieces together. And the result was that I had to express everything somewhat abstractly. And it's funny because when you do abstract things like abstract mathematics, what often happens is that it turns out to be far more applicable than you ever really intended it to be. And to me, this is one of the powerful aspects of abstraction, that it seems like you're moving away from reality, but what happens is that you're bringing more things in. And as a result, the emotional arc that I wrote into these words turns out to be, I think, much more widely applicable. It's applicable basically to anyone who's ever dreamed of doing something, has got some way towards succeeding, but then has found that they're still not really accepted by the existing gatekeepers. And this applies to many people who have been excluded on many different grounds, maybe because they're women, maybe because they're non-white, maybe because they're part of the LGBTQI plus community, or because they're refugees, or they are socioeconomically disadvantaged, or perhaps they have suffered life-changing illness, or trauma, or abuse. There are so many reasons that people get excluded. And many friends of mine have gone through those experiences and told me that these words resonate with them as well. So what I'll do, there are eight songs, and we'll perform them in pairs. And I'll talk a little bit about them as we go along, but I hope that the words will speak for themselves. And if you'd like to follow along, I was thinking that one thing you can do is go to this website and follow on your phone while we're performing. So that, that URL again is, if I get it right, tinyurl.com slash cheng, A-W-M. The next two songs, the next song was originally about being so overwhelmed by seeing this amazing man. And so I've written it about dreaming of what, I want to, what one wants to do in life, a sort of unspecified ambition of what you want to achieve. And then the one after that is disbelief that someone has awarded you something. Maybe it's a job or a prize or a promotion or a book contract or something. So those will be the next two songs. Thank you.
Thank you. So that was a song mostly about imposter syndrome, but I would like to point out that imposter syndrome is not just something in our heads. For those of us who, who feel like imposters, many of us, especially women and people of color, it's because people have actually told us repeatedly that they don't think that we're good enough. And so I like to say it's not really imposter syndrome, it's really surrounded by unsupportive people syndrome. And that does bring us into the next two songs, which are about the support networks that we need in order to succeed at things. And a particular, in particular, a different form of success that isn't just about accolades and acclaim and earning money and winning prizes. In my last book, X plus Y, A Mathematician's Manifesto for Rethinking Gender, I introduced some new words, ingressive and congressive, to replace the gendered concepts of character types that we have. And I said that ingressive signifies kind of being an individual, going into things, being independent, ambitious, competitive. And the, those are the traditional forms of success that we have rewarded and that the status quo tends to reward. And instead, I prefer to value congressive versions of success, bringing people together, um, nurturing, collaboration, and not trying to beat other people down in order to raise ourselves up. And so I wanted to write about that form of success. The song is, is quite introspective and introspectively joyful. Originally, it's about a ring on her finger, and she gazes at it and says that this ring has taught me that my, the purpose of my life is to serve my husband. So never mind about that. I didn't just give up on the song because it has some mathematics in it, which I teach to my students at the Art Institute in my class called the Mathematical Secrets of Music. The math in it is a melodic inversion, and that is mathematically a reflection in the horizontal line. So melodic inversion is where you flip a melody upside down so that everywhere it used to go up, it now goes down by the same amount. And Bach does this a lot, but it's nice to have some examples of these kinds of things in music that isn't Bach. And so I do this one where the theme goes, that there's a tune in the middle that goes, do, 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 do. So, ba, ba, ba. The inversion is ba, 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 ba. And I am quite pleased with myself because I've made it a poetic inversion as well. So, the first theme, the one way up, is that many people supported me, which is true of me. And it is true, many people have supported me to get to where I am. But the inversion is that many people said I would never become what I wanted to be. And unfortunately, a lot of people said that as well. The, the reason that I didn't just want to give up on this isn't just because of the math in it. And I don't think that math in music makes music good. It, it can be an interesting way of composing, but this is such a gorgeous song, and not just for the singer, but also for the pianist as well, I think. Schumann was a pianist, but his wife Clara was also a pianist, and actually, she was also a composer. And their joint diaries describe how when he wrote this song cycle, which was right around when they were about to get married, caused a huge argument between them. She didn't like the themes in it. And he said to her, well, this is what you're going to have to do when we're married. It's no more of your art. You're going to exist in service of my art. And so Clara Wieck became Clara Schumann and really stopped composing her own music and dedicated her piano career to, to performing the music of her husband. So this is kind of my tribute to Clara who is in fact my pianistic great-grandparent, which means that she is my piano teacher's piano teacher's piano teacher. 
Incidentally, my mathematical great-grandparent is Alan Turing. That's my super PhD supervisor's supervisor's supervisor. And I am quite proud of that joint lineage. And so now here are two songs about Congress of success and the support networks that help us to get there. Deepest ambition. 
Thank you. And even as we were playing it, I was feeling inspired myself, I admit, especially by the line that where I've earned respect and awe and I pledge to dispense it with care and compassion and help those who've rarely been helped before. Because for me, that is genuinely the point of having a voice and reaching a point where I have a voice and where I, I, people will tune in and listen to me say things. It's not just to be acclaimed. It's so that I can use it to help other people. And that is what Congress of Success for me is about. It's not about glory. It's about being in a better position to help others. And so unfortunately, at this point, we reach the turning point in the cycle where the protagonist, who may be me or who may be somebody else, realizes that although they've achieved success, they just don't really fit in, whether it's because of their own beliefs and aims or because people are really opposing them because they're not doing things in the way that is expected of them. Now, in the original cycle, this is the point where she gets pregnant and has a baby, and that's the life-changing point in her life. But unfortunately, many people like me are unable to do that. Some people don't want to, but in fact, about 18% of women are childless involuntarily, and that is a very deep trauma. But I do know that having children is also sometimes a reason that people are forced to change their career direction because our industry and others are not very conducive to motherhood or helpful towards people with small children. And when I've done panels of role models, women role models in STEM and beyond, I've noticed that often every single woman on that panel has changed direction in the middle of their career for whatever reasons. And this is something that I am proud of having done, that I changed the direction of my career and found a different way to do things. And so I hope that these next two songs, although it's, it, it depicts the sad reality of not being accepted, it is galvanizing in the story of not just putting up with it forever, but changing things around in a transformative way.
Now we come to the last song. And in the original poetry, this is where the man dies and the woman says, well, he was my whole life, so there's really no point anymore. My life is basically over. And she decides to retreat into a world where she just remembers the past. And so the music goes back to the music of the beginning. And unlike some, some song cycles, it really is a cycle. It goes back to the beginning. But in a sort of inward backward looking way. Now, I love loops mathematically, and loops come up a lot in mathematics. And I've written about them many times, and the way that we use loops to create more math, that we use loops to make computer programs, that we use loops to create infinity. In this case, I wanted to make a loop that isn't just going back to the beginning, but that goes back to the beginning transformatively, because we're not going back to square one. We've brought all this experience with us. And if you know any topology, it reminds me of universal covering spaces where you don't just get, when you make a loop, you're not just back at the beginning, but you carry with you the knowledge of the path you took to get there. And so I decided to write so that the, the coming back to the beginning is, is not just retreating into yourself, but is forward looking. And I admit that that transition, when we come back to the beginning music, bah, Ba, ba, ba. It does quite often make me cry because I know I'm proud of how I've transformed my life to be different before. And when I wrote this music, I didn't yet know that I was never going to be able to be a mother. It seemed likely because I, I just had another miscarriage. But now when I think about it, I think to myself, I feel galvanized because I've done it before. I've transformed myself and reinvented myself in ways that I didn't imagine. And I believe I can do it again. And I believe that other people can do it. And here is my hope for the future with these new songs and with the way that we move forward as, as women in mathematics and other people who've previously been excluded from different fields. My hope, first of all, is that more people will sing these new words rather than the original ones. And that we will all feel galvanized 
to continue to make paths for ourselves, even when they're not the ones that the status quo wants us to take. And that moreover, we will feel galvanized to work hard so that other people who follow in our footsteps don't have to go through the things that we went through. And maybe, maybe in a hundred years, if we're not extinct from climate change, maybe my new words will become irrelevant and someone else will sit down and decide to rewrite them again. Yes, that's a big hope, but I am an optimist. That's why I'm in education, because I really believe that we can help the next generation to do better than us. And that's why I will continue to do this work. And I hope you will too.
Thank you so much. This was, uh, <laughs> I, I don't have words, but you said, uh, you put all these words uh, with the music. I mean, this is so beautiful, so beautiful. I Maybe I will just write the, the comments from the chat. This was wonderful. Thank you. This was a thought-provoking and moving session. Thank you so much for this presentation and beautiful music. Uh, truly beautiful and inspirational. Thank you so much. Uh, this was especially wonderful. Thank you. Claps, claps, claps. Uh, Thank you so much. This was um, very emotional, I would say. Um, <laughs> so I am <laughs> without the, the words. So please uh, keep thanking uh, Eugene and Sarah. This was beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you.